The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. He continued, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. I thought I'd take a few moments before getting into the homily to introduce myself briefly to you. So I was uh, born a number of years ago in Scotland, and uh, someone asked me just before Mass, where is my Scottish accent? Roll up the rim to win. <laughs> I was only one and a half when I came to Canada with my parents, and my dad had just found a job over here, so uh, I grew up here in Canada. I grew up in Sarnia most of my life for, for the, until I went off to school. I'm uh, the second of four children. I was ordained a priest uh, 26 years ago, and I've served in different parishes. My first three parishes were in London, Ontario, and uh, during that time I joined the military reserves and then was sent off uh, to Bosnia. Uh, for three months before going to Bosnia's preparation, I was sent to Valcarche, Quebec. So it was a little French immersion experience for me, and I also deployed with uh, a French regiment, the Van Dues, for six months. So it uh, helped my French out greatly. Uh, however. J'ai besoin d'un peu plus de practice, so I'm happy to be here and we're helping and working on my French a little bit too. So after coming back from uh, the military overseas, uh, I was assigned to Stratford, where I was a pastor for the first time there for three years, uh, Immaculate Conception Parish. It's the smaller of the two parishes in the city of Stratford, and I was the last pastor before it became part of the f cluster, I guess we called it back then, uh, with St. Joseph's, the other parish. I then moved to Seaforth, and with Seaforth and Clinton for two years, and then Seaforth and Dublin for the following seven. And for the last nine years, uh, I've been in uh, Wallaceburg, Port Lambton, and the last four of those in uh, Dresden, when we became a family of parishes uh, there. I've been here since Tuesday, so I'm just kind of getting to know the area uh, a little better at this time, and uh, seeing a few people that I've known from before, so I'm happy to get reacquainted and to meet uh, new people as well. Uh, in my spare time, I enjoy running, and I just a few years ago uh, took up uh, doing triathlons too, so I enjoy that. Helps to me to burn off some stress and uh, to keep, uh, keep my energy levels up. I enjoy music. Uh, in Wallaceburg, a concert band started a number of years ago, so I had the opportunity to go back to my old high school instrument of the bassoon. If any of you know what a bassoon is, not too many people know what a bassoon is. It's a, it's a strange looking instrument. It's like two long pipes side by side. It's a very low woodwind instrument. It's played with a double reed uh, and it's kind of a unique sound to it. Uh, I also uh, play the bagpipes. So with being from Scotland, did I mention that? I like to keep in touch with my Scottish roots and play that occasionally uh, from time to time. Uh, when I learned I was coming to this uh, family of parishes, one of the priests I was with before thought it would be funny if I tried to uh, speak French with a Scottish accent. But I assured him I'd try and speak French, but not necessarily with a Scottish accent. The other day I had my first uh, Mass in Bell River, and uh, I was here about three weeks ago with Father Patrick, and he was kind of showing me around. I had a quick tour of the different churches, and he tried to explain and, and help introduce me to the place, places. And uh, so I'd just been there that one time to, to Bell River, and uh, the other day going out to Mass, I think it was Thursday morning, uh, I was, wasn't sure if I could remember exactly where it was. I remember it wasn't right on the main street, but it was just kind of one street back. So as I'm driving there thinking, I'm hoping I can find the place, what came to mind was the famous words of the Curie of Ars, uh, St. John Marie Vianney. He was assigned to this little tiny parish in uh, Ars in France, and uh, he was walking there, and it got lost along the way. And there he meets a little boy on the road, and said, he said to him, show me the way to Ars, and I'll show you the way to heaven. So I thought, wouldn't it be neat if I have to stop and ask someone directions? But then, as I was driving along, I saw the parish right there, so it never actually happened, but but I'll still try to show you the way to heaven, and you can help me to get to heaven too. That'd be great. So uh, 
in today's gospel passage, it's one of my favorite passages in all of the scriptures where Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And at any times where I felt uh, burdened, I felt uh, stressed out, where I felt exhausted at different things in life, uh, this passage is a great consolation, an invitation to return to the Lord, to come to God in prayer, and to let God refresh and, and renew and restore me. And it's amazing how God can do that uh, in prayer. Uh, moving from one place to another, I'm sure many of you have moved at some point, that itself is a stressful thing. And then you add uh, saying goodbye to everybody and the kind of the loss or the grieving that goes with that, uh, as well as then moving to, let's say, a larger reality of, uh, uh, I came from a family of four, four parishes, but they were not as big as the four parishes that we have here. Uh, bigger staff as well, so there's a little extra stress with those things. But I think the invitation is just to trust in the Lord uh, as well. At one point when I was first asked to come here, I was kind of complaining to the Lord in prayer, saying, Lord, this is such a big reality. Uh, so many people here, uh, how am I supposed to? And I was thinking minister, but I, it came out feed these people. And I kept on going with only five loaves and two fish. And that became my answer right there. Okay, just trust to do, give your, do your part and then the Lord will provide the rest. So I'll rely on your prayers and I'll be certainly praying for, for all of you as well. But we trust in the Lord. About a, a month ago or so, you may have heard there was a horrific uh, crash in uh, Wallaceburg, which claimed the life uh, of three young people. Uh, there were five in the vehicle that hit uh, a, a truck, and three were killed instantly. Uh, one more is still recovering in hospital, and another was in hospital and has been uh, released. So uh, when I heard the news of that, uh, Again, in prayer, I thought, Lord, I'm going to need some extra help, some extra strength to be able to help and minister to these families and these people uh, during this time. And uh, the immediate response that came into my mind, which I've learned over time is one of the ways of God speaking to me, is just this kind of thought that comes into my mind as soon as I make a prayer. And uh, that was, just breathe. And I thought, wow, so simple, so easy, and it has lots of levels of meaning. On the one hand, you can say just breathe, meaning just relax or stay calm. Uh, but in another sense, uh, uh, anyone who's into any sports or athletics knows how important uh, breathing is. If you want to keep going, especially for distance sports, you have to have a good breathing and keep on breathing. So that invitation, just breathe. Also, uh, sometimes you hear the expression, take one day at a time. But sometimes when life gets difficult, sometimes even that maybe seems like too much. But if you can take one breath at a time, just breathe, go from breath to breath, uh, that's a great way to do it. On the spiritual level, uh, another uh, meaning of the just breathe is uh, we're connecting and thinking about the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is sometimes called the breath of God. And uh, that invitation to prayer, that invitation to breathe in the Holy Spirit, uh, to be filled with God in prayer, to be renewed and find the strength and grace and help we need in prayer. So just to breathe, keep on praying and God would help me through and give me what I needed at that time. A little while later, reflecting on that and what a, what a beautiful, simple uh, answer uh, of the prayer that was to just breathe, I, I thought about another level of meaning of that just breathe as well. Breathing is not only uh, breathing in air, but it's also breathing out. And I think the Lord's saying that uh, he wants me to breathe out the Holy Spirit. But to do that, we have to breathe in first. There's an old saying that says, uh, you can't give what you don't got. In other words, we need to, in prayer, uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need, in prayer, to be united to the Lord, to bring the Lord, to bring uh, healing, peace, to be as minister to others. We need to be in touch with the Lord uh, in prayer. So just breathe. It's interesting as well that uh, one of the things I've discovered over the years is when we read scripture passages again and again on different uh, occasions, uh, sometimes different things jump out to us. And uh, even though this has been one of my favorite passages for many, many years, there's a part which only just kind of leapt out for me this past week. And that was when the Lord says, no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And that word choose uh, kind of linked in my mind to another gospel passage uh, of the man, the leper, who approaches Jesus and says, if you choose, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I do choose, be made clean. And that invitation then, uh, Jesus saying, whoever he chooses, he can reveal, to the, uh, reveal the Father. Uh, why don't we simply ask Jesus to reveal the Father to us? And uh, I think that's a, a prayer that the Lord wants or is happy to, to say, I do choose, and to reveal the Father. 
Now, in a sense, another passage in scripture, Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So they are intimately uh, united, but at the same time, our invitation as Christians is to be united with the Trinity. We're invited into that life, that perfect communion of life and love uh, in, in, in the Trinity, and that's what we're preparing for and, and working on, and hopefully growing in all our lives here and now and look forward to uh, in heaven as well. So as we continue with this Eucharist, we are especially united to the entire Trinity, especially to the Lord as we receive his body and blood. So let us thank God for his love for us, for his mercy for us, and uh, pray that we would respond in love and mercy to the Lord and one another.